Hey, it's Tim here again with uh, Expert Power Wash, and behind me I got a freshly built skid. Gonna do a little walk around, show you what we can do here in uh, Portland, Oregon. This is for a, a friend of ours that we built, Brock. So Brock, hope you enjoy your skid. Let's do a walk around. Let's take a look. All right, here it is. This is an eight foot skid, all built out of aluminum with the fork pockets. Got the surface cleaner rack up there, Nate GM. We'll come back to that last. But let's start in here and take a look and see what we got. It's 11 gallon uh, Boyd's welding gas tank. You can do a lot with these different plugs and pickup tubes and different types of gauges. There's a breather on there. These are awesome tanks. Back there we have those 100 gallon slim tanks. Those are the ones that are double thick. You can stand on these, they don't bow. Just awesome tanks, caps on both sides. Got 200 feet of, my opinion, the best pressure washing hose you can buy right now. This is that one wire fierce jet stuff. I can get in there, it's upside down, but the pressure is 4350. Usually these one wires, you're gonna see 3500 PSI to 4000. Uh, these are just a little bit stronger. They're gonna last longer. When we switched over to these, we stopped blowing hoses as often. All right, going on over here, we have the 18-inch uh, King's hose reels. These are nicely built. This appears to be stainless. The rest of the frame on this thing's aluminum. It has the uh, stainless manifold. And then over here, as you can see, we have the Curatec hose, half inch. What we did here is we have a crimper, which we absolutely love, so we're able to make custom hoses and fittings and things like that right here in the shop. But instead of hose clamps on here, this is crimped on. It's not gonna leak, it's gonna last a lot longer. And then we got it going into the uh, gun here. But it's just a little bit cleaner and longer lasting and just one less fail point right there. That's the way we run them. That's the way we did them here for Brock. All right, going on over here, we got the downstream bypass. You can see we have that nicely mounted here with uh, 3D printed custom mounts. So you can turn your soap on and off. You can see right here, that's a stainless uh, half inch barb. The reason why we got that unhooked is we're not gonna prime the pump until we get this into the truck. We're gonna have to fill it with uh, bleach and water soap. So it's just a little bit easier to load if we wait to prime it until we get it in there. So that'll be hooked up. There's the hose for that. Same thing with the pressure hose. It's gonna be a lot easier when we're spread out outside the shop. We're gonna reel it up there. This right here is just a jumper hose for storage. So again, nothing runs through the reel. That's capped over there. You just pull off what you need and then just plug onto that. Right beside the reel, super convenient. Going on over here, you have the three quarter Flexzilla. You have a three quarter hose that goes in over there, if you can see that, and that goes down to a Hudson float valve. You can see we inverted, if that's the, the proper term, the bulkhead there. The reason why we did that is he wanted this thing, the ladders on this as low as they could possibly be. So by flipping that, we we're able to get that down a little bit lower for him. All right, going over to the back side, this is the side that'll be closest to the cab. Look at these mounts. All right, you'll notice there's no crossbar here. One of the newer designs that the fabricator's doing is these are up against the inside of this. So you can shake this thing, probably shake the whole skid, but those things are in there tight. They're not going anywhere. There's a surface cleaner rack up there. You can see all that. This is the buyer's 18 inch, 18 by 24, I believe it is, buyer's box. We've tried those $200 ones you can buy on Amazon. They're like paper thin. There's a reason why this is 375 and those other ones are 200 bucks. I wouldn't waste your time on them. Just get something that's going to be good. 
So you can see we got the wires coming in from the underneath. These are all heat shrunk, custom cut cables. The cables that we use are double insulated. We don't use any of the, the Chinese stuff. We like the double insulated for the battery leads because they're gonna last a lot longer and there's two layers of protection. Plus they're, they're upsized, I believe that's six gauge. Oh, there's the downstream gun there. Stainless parts, stainless six inch. This, if you can see here, we run the 2315. Uh, we like these guns because they're chemical resistant. Uh, we do a lot of downstreaming. Some of the guys by us do a lot of downstreaming. Got the J-Rod over there for the soft wash system. Going on over here, we have the seven gallon soap tank. That's bolted from the bottom. So you don't need anything to hold this thing in. There's, it's actually molded. There's four mounting points, two on each, each side from the underneath. And then going on over here, this is the Midwest mixer. I'm gonna come over to the other side here, get a better view of this. This is what we run our trucks. We're actually a dealer for uh, Midwest. We partnered with these guys because they make great stuff and it's what we use. So you can see that's uh, custom mounted to a plate. And then we have the on off switch right here, conveniently located there. So when you're adjusting your mix or before or after you can shut it off, turn it on. See all the hoses run underneath, no hose clamps. This has, this is the one with the door. We sell the one with the door and without the door. It's about a hundred dollar upgrade for us. You can see the custom frame that it's mounted to. One thing to add, every, every bolt, nut, washer, everything on here is stainless. And then this is the 8G GPM gear drive. And then this is set up, this is a custom setup spec to how we run them. Got the heavy duty aluminum frame. And then we like to have the K7 unloader block mounted. So that little block there is what everything runs through. And then that gets connected to the backside of the skid. By mounting the, uh, the unloader to the backside there and not mounting it to the, the pump, you reduce the vibration and possible future fail points. Got some custom fittings. Got the little jumper hose run into it. I believe this is the PA gear drive. That's a general pump. GX690. One thing to add about this machine is we have the OEM exhaust. And it's been said, I don't know if it's true or false, but it sounds good to me. Um, I'm told that you get about a horsepower, hor one point something when you run the OEM exhaust. Makes sense to me. Um, if you've heard that or not heard that, drop it down in the comments. There's the machine, we absolutely love these. We have a couple trucks that we run the belt drives, as we upgrade and change things out, we'll be going to all of these. So here's the backside again. Got a couple more things to show you here. One of the upgrades that we did for Brock here, he doesn't know it yet, but we mounted him a light. It's going to be kind of hard to see, but it's LED lights. It's on the backside of this rail up here. So you can't see it by looking at it, but it's gonna light up the whole bed here. So if you're working at night, you're working early in the morning, you just need some light. Got a little LED light there. All right, let me show you some of the plumbing real quick, and then we'll wrap this video up. So I'll go back to the sides of the tanks there so I can show you how we ran this. So we got crush proof, inch and a half, all the bulkheads. If you guys have seen my videos, I got lots of videos on how to do this. So if you have questions, I love comments, but I may have already covered some of these things, but you'll notice there's no hose clamps, 
these are clamps, but these uh, clamp a little more evenly. You're going to get a better seal. So it goes inch and a half into inch and a half, the Y strainer filter. And then what we did here was just put a little reducer. So we got one inch running up to the machine for the feed. And then back over to here, you have a one inch uh, cap there. That's where you clean out the filter. So instead of using that for a filter clean out, we have a hand wash station or eye wash, fill a bucket, whatever you want to do, drain the tanks. So if you look wherever we have it here, I think I covered it. There we go. So we got a one inch uh, ball valve there where you can drain your tanks and again, wash your hands, eyes, whatever you need to do, fill a bucket. And this is a heavy duty hose. Good stuff there. If you look at this, just one, another thing to add as far as the details here, these fittings are crimped on. So if you've noticed one of the themes that we're switching out to is a lot of the hoses are custom made. They're custom crimped. They're not thrown together, kind of like a backyard throw together thing here. We're trying to put this stuff together with high quality stuff and reduce the possible fail points. All right, let's take a look at the plumbing up on top of the tanks here. Just to show you how this works, I'm actually gonna get up there. This is all being shot in real time, so bear with me. But I'm actually standing, or actually kneeling on these tanks. Super strong. Caps on each side. So one thing you'll notice here, these are called uniseals. And anywhere where we can reduce bulkheads, besides, I think the only bulkhead I have on the top of the tank is this one here for the water fill. And that's just because we had to screw a uh, Hudson float valve. I'll show you. Let's take a look. We had to screw that on there. What that does is it shuts off the water when the tanks are full. So when the water level gets up to that, it cuts off the water. All right, going on over here. Again, like I was talking about, these are uniseals. Just one less thing to crack. When we first started building these years ago, we'd run bulkheads here and then run drop sticks. And it would constantly, you know, sway with the water and then it would crack the bulkheads or the, the drop stick. So we went to this design. We've had a lot less problems. So let's take a look in here. If you can see anything, I'll try to show you. So there's the bypass. It just goes right in there. We undersized that and pulled that through really tight. And then it just goes right into there. And then if you can see, I don't know if I'm going to be able to. There's a piece of uh, PEX that's running on top of the, uh, the poly braid. Let's see if I can get, a, get you a shot in there. You can kind of see there. So those are slotted filters. And then I'm not going to be able to do that with uh, one hand here. But anyways, these poly braid hoses, you can see, they run continuous. There's a little barb at the bottom there where they're hooked up to a filter. But they run continuous all the way through the tank. Then, of course, down into the mixer. Same thing with the soap tank. You can kind of see the backside there. Right there. That's run through there. No bulkheads on that. Let's go on over to the downstream inside, if you can see that. Pull one of these off here. I guess we could have looked when we had the cap off just a minute ago, but you can see that. Oh, you can see the other side of the, the drop stick there, though. So again, the, the downstreaming is set up the same way. The quarter inch runs through that half inch uh, PVC riser. And then there's a barb. It just hooks into the barb, the back side of that filter there. So again, reduced fail points. You can kind of see, see how the hose just runs straight up through and then down over to the three-way and then into the injector. So again, low maintenance. 
These are tried and true methods. I know there's more than one way to do this. This is the way that we do it, and it has worked out really well. So I think Brock's going to be really excited about this skid. If you guys need a skid, you want something that's built up like this, let me jump down here. We can do this for you. We have extra space now here in Portland, Oregon. We can finance these things. So this one here that we're looking at was financed. You can finance the skid. Our builder will build that for you. And then we can sit down and talk about equipment and figure out what fits your needs. And we can get this thing put together. Now's the time in the down season while, while everybody's not you know, backed up with builds. This one's going out today. And then we have another one starting here in about a week. So if anything, if you're not looking for a skid from us, hope this video helps. If you are building a skid, maybe there's some tips or some things that'll help you as well along the way. Appreciate you guys watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe. We'll see you in another video.